Underwater research has brought me unusual assignments, but uh, one of the strangest was given me by marine land of the Pacific. It was a quiet morning, the sky was clear, untroubled, peaceful. Or so it seemed when I started down into the big fish tank. I'd taken on the force feeding of a blue shark that was refusing to swallow food. It's odd how these fish, so ferocious in the ocean, are timid in captivity. It was this job that brought me to exactly the right place at the right time to get the most demanding assignment of my life. An assignment that made every newspaper headline in the country. I was at the bottom of the marine land tank feeding the shark when I felt an unusual vibration. It must have come from outside the tank. I uh, surfaced to investigate. It was the sonic boom of a jet. It's kind of funny how the jet pilot's problem survival was the same as mine. Oxygen taken for granted at sea level, but a vital concern at 40,000 feet up or 40 feet down. But at the moment, his welfare was being looked after by a control boat offshore. It was monitoring his flight. He came out of that dive pretty low. What was the reading on the scope, Captain? 3,000 feet. Control to XF-190. XF-190 to control. You've worked in too close to shore. Roger. And your pullout was low on your last dive. I began pull-out at same altitude as previous dives. Sluggish reaction from controls. Shall I try again? Yes. Repeat conditions. Match two dive from 40,000 feet. Begin pull-out at 10,000. Level off at... What's the matter? Control to XF-190. Come in, XF-190. Control to XF-190. Acknowledge. You see him? Just about. He seems to be almost down on the deck. Except to control. Violent vibration throughout ship. Cannot hold altitude. I'm going to ditch. Do you see me? Jim, bail out. I think I can pull her out of it. Get rid of your canopy and bail out. Can't. Too late. Where did he go in? 275 degrees. 275 degrees. Go, Captain. Get the office on the radio phone. Hello? Oh, yes, put him on. Uh, hello? What? Yes, sir, that's right. And then he went in. When did it happen? What went wrong? How soon will you be over the spot? About 10 minutes. All right, hold on. The XF-190 just went into the ocean. Who is the pilot? Jim Cook. Did he get out all right? Stayed with the ship. He has two children. He didn't have a chance. The plane sank in 60 seconds. We've lost Cook. And a research investment of a cool $10 million. What went wrong? We've got to rebuild and we can't put the same error back in. What did Ryman say? Well, the only thing Cook said on the radio was violent vibration throughout the ship. He... Hey, Ryman. Yeah. Do you know how deep it is where the jet went in? Yes, sir. I have the chart right here. It's 60 feet to the bottom. All right, now get this. Put a die marker overboard where the plane hit. Watch for air bubbles and the service. Get your sonar operating. But find that aircraft. I'll have a Navy salvage crew out to you as soon as I can. We've got to raise that ship and find out what went wrong. Sir, the captain says we've got to tie a marker boy to the XF within an hour. I can't get the Navy out there in an hour. Why an hour? Hello, sir. This is the captain. It's blowing up out here. I wouldn't guarantee more than another hour of calm sea. After that, it might get too rough to search. Sir, if we don't mark and find the wreck now, we might never locate it again. All right. You locate that jet now. I'll have a marker buoy tied to it in 15 minutes. 
I know a man who can save us $10 million in 15 minutes. How? Jeannie, get me Mike Nelson at Marine Land of the Pacific. If he's not there, try his boat through KOU. But find him in a hurry, it's important. I, uh, I think you better call Jim Cook's wife. Who's Mike Nelson? Oh, uh, he's an ex-frogman. Knows this part of the coast from top to bottom. It's a big rush. Door Aviation wants you in a hurry. One of their jets conked out at sea. Oh? Now, what do they want me to do? Get out and hook on a marker buoy? Yeah, it's six miles out, 60 feet down. They say what happened to the pilot? Did he bail out in time? Ah, uh, he went down with the jet. <laughs> uh, those test pilots, they really have it rough. I'll take sharks any day. Now, well, let's see. Better give me an extra lung. Yeah? And I'll need the underwater phone. Right. I'll go get dressed. No, you don't have time. I told them you were in the tank. They said, come as you are. They've got a helicopter on the way to pick you up. Bubbles on the water, about 75 feet. Jack, throw out the hook. Half the battle. Thor Copter to Thor Control Boat. I'm approaching you at 500 feet, one mile east. I have Nelson aboard and ready to dive. Request instructions. We're right over the XF 190 now. Can you put Nelson aboard us? We'll put him alongside. Out. Nelson? Yeah. Well, it sure looks like it won't be much trouble finding that jet of yours. All I'll have to do is follow those bubbles down. I'll uh, hook this line onto her and set up a marker. You watch for it now, huh? Mike, I've got this underwater light all hooked up. Can you use it? Oh, yeah, fine. That's a good idea. What about your underwater phone? No, not this trip. If I need anything, I'll uh, send up a message on this slate. How? Uh, with one of these rescue packs I've got. Is there anything else you want? Yeah, that jet plane.
There it is, he's found it. There's another marker. Looks like a slate. Get the boat hook. This pilot was trapped in the cockpit of his airplane 60 feet below the surface. He would die unless I got him out. He had only 15 minutes of oxygen left. But how could he be saved? Could I get him out alive? The odds were impossible, but something had to be done. Still, a wrong move might kill him instead of save him. The pressure might finish him. The water might drown him. And time. The minutes were running out. What the devil do you mean, pilot alive? That's right. He's alive. What are you talking about? He can't breathe water. But there isn't any water in the cockpit. The seal didn't break. His canopy is jammed tight. And he's surviving in his oxygen mask. Impossible. No, it's possible. Well, we got to work fast if we're going to save him. He's only got about 15 more minutes of oxygen left. Now think, now think. How are we going to get him out? Rip off the canopy, haul him out, bring him up. From 60 feet, he'll drown before he reaches the top. No, I think I can take care of that with the extra lung that I brought along. But what's going to happen to him when I pry off that canopy? When the sudden pressure at 60 feet hits, will it finish him? Well, I'm afraid that's a chance we're going to have to take. What other way is there? How about bringing the whole plane up? You got a winch and cable, haven't you, Captain? Yes, but it won't lift more than three ton. How much does it jet weigh? Ten ton? Out of water. In the water, it's hard to say. There's air in the cockpit and the wings and maybe some of the scoop. She may still have a lot of buoyancy. All right, we'll just lift her up to the top. Not out. It's the best bet. Let's try it. Come on, give me the cable, Captain. I'll take it down. Right. Let's hook up the underwater phone to me, huh? Right. Hurry now, hurry! Gonna need a lot of luck. If he had 15 minutes when Nelson found him, he only has 12 now. He says to take in the slack. All right, bring the slack in a little bit. Easy now. That's enough. He said to start hauling in. Easy. It's 
lifting now. We got eight minutes left. gear broke. Well, can it be fixed? No. Listen, Nelson. Nelson, the gear on the winch broke. There was too much weight. Tell him it can't be fixed. The winch won't work. He says to send down a crowbar, an axe, or anything, he'll chop him out of the canopy. That, that pressure will kill him. He says to send down the extra lung. Captain. Do you have an axe or a crowbar or anything? Yes, I'll get it. Good. Jack, get that extra lung here and hurry it up, will you? What's that? Can you keep the cable taut? Yes. Yes, we're sending all the stuff down now. He says he can't smash through the canopy. He can't swing hot enough underwater. Tell him to pry it off. He's already tried that. What? He wants to know if you got some kind of cutting torch aboard. Captain? Yes. Good, then get it. Right. Tell him to come after it. Nelson, we've got the torch. Come on up after it. There's only four minutes left. Let him use the torch. He's pointing to bubbles inside the cockpit. Bubbles. Oxygen. There's free oxygen seeping in through the cockpit. Nelson, the bubbles mean free oxygen under the canopy. If the torch burns through, there'll be a flash fire. Well, what'll he do? He's got to cut him out. And fast. The water's already up to the canopy. Up to where? The canopy. Well, that's the answer. Tell them to cut through the metal below the water level. Then there'll be no fire. Nelson, Nelson, can you hear me? Can you? Now listen carefully. Cut a piece a half foot square out of the cockpit. The left side, eight, repeat, eight inches below the canopy and halfway between the front and rear of the canopy. Got it? You'll be able to reach the release with your hand and then push it back. Got it?
My watch says he's almost finished. Nelson, can you hear me? Nelson, can you hear me? Nelson, say that again. He says to haul Jim up, to haul him up. He's tied him to the marker buoy line. There's a chance he may be alive. Haul that white line in. Jim Cook was safely on his way up. I went into the cockpit to take out a monitor camera. Then suddenly I saw something else. Something that Cook might want. A pair of baby shoes. Now, she? Pretty lucky, thanks to you. Just got a broken eardrum. Good. Thought you might want this camera. Oh, great. Maybe it'll tell us how he crashed. All anchor. We're heading for shore. Get what it takes, fella. And I think this is what really saved you. Hi. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today.